All right, the jobs report numbers are out, and they're, well, we're going to look at the jobs report numbers. We're going to look at treasury bonds, interest rates, the general market, like what's going on right now. Um, some things may have just changed. And uh, please hit like, share, Skype, Skype, <laughs> Skype, not Skype, <laughs> notifications or whatever. Uh, all right, so let's go to the treasury bonds. This is the TLT, which is the 20-year treasury bond ETF. Now, uh, as we've seen, we've just broken out to the upside on treasury bonds, which is a deflationary bond trade right now. And that goes 100% in line with what Jerome Powell was just saying before the jobs report came out, is that they're not going to taper eventually. They're going to taper right now, which means reducing the Fed buying assets, buying treasuries, and buying you know mortgage-backed securities and bonds, uh, like corporate bonds off the corporate bond sheets. So you would expect a deflationary move. That's what tapering generally indicates. Um, but now we get this jobs report that is a miss. It was uh, 210,000 was the jobs number, which it came in. I mean, they're expecting rel like a pretty bad number anyway. Um, but this is less than half of the number from last month, and it's also a miss on expectations. So it's weak and it's a miss. It's extra weak. So now is you know Jerome Powell going to come out and say like, oh, the bonds? I mean the uh, the tapering like is too fast. Maybe they'll like change their mind or something, which they do sometimes. Um, that's possible. A bad shot number could. Uh, make them slow down on the tapering possibly which would be bullish for the stock market Haven't heard anything like that yet, but uh, definitely be looking out for that But anyway, the Treasury bond uh, Trading has been expecting this taper. Well for a minute like this is a, a Half a year of the Treasury bonds trying to go up, but it didn't look like a breakout until now because we've had this downtrend line that we we're you know Deciding where to go, but this is a, a definite breakout off, you know, double tap off the trend line and broke up into a new channel here. So, like, deflationary bond trade, the bonds are trading up in value, which means interest rates are going to come down. And the last time our interest rates were around zero is when they're up here. So, you can see, like, if we trade back up here, you know, it, if we trade up into the next channel, I mean, this is threatening to push interest rates right back down to zero. Like, I don't know if we get that far, but usually you trade across the channel. So uh, that could get very interesting, and that's a big threat to the stock market. And so let's take a look at the market and see what's going on. I have a, <laughs> I have a very aggressive. If you have seen the last couple of videos, you saw what I was showing on the stock market. But I think that we are hopping on top of a downtrend line here. And we want to go down and test this thing out. And if Jerome Pell is going to flip-flop or whatever, I would imagine that's around when it happens. Um, and this is going to be the third hit down into a downtrend line. Like if you go back and look at a downtrend line at the COVID, the third tap was this COVID crash here, boom. Um, and then we got a huge rally. But each tap off the downtrend line got a higher and higher jump here. And I could see us doing that exact same thing again on this little one. So I think this is a huge, you know, a huge um, discovery of a downtrend line, but we're not done with the bull market. And this is a similar thing uh, at the top. I think we're in a topping pattern, but we're not at the top yet is what I think is happening right now. And so, yeah, so this job number uh, relative to the market uh, should be a good thing. I think the, a bad jobs number would mean that they probably, well, it's not, it's not great. Like long-term, if we're looking at going into like a recessionary period, it's like indicating we may be going into a recession soon, but in the short term, uh, if the fed reverses directions based on that number, it's okay. So anyway, here's the idea. Let me go to the hourly. Cause you can definitely see the you can see the S&P trade way better on the hourly. And you can see what we've done here is we had this notch down off the top of the bull channel. We hopped up 
into a new whole channel here, right? And then our bubble, we blew out the top and tested it. Um, and this is a false breakout, which immediately is bearish. And now we've put in a very solid bear shelf, um, this very strong downtrend line. And so, well, let me paint the bullish case. And the bullish case means we come down and bounce really hard, but this bear shelf generally is going to throw is going to throw a dart to the downside, and I think next week we're going to see that. Um, but yeah, anyway, the bull case and what I expect to happen since we're bouncing down this trend line is to hit it, maybe break it a little bit. So this is in the four like the 4,000 to 4,200 range is where I think we would be bouncing off of the downtrend line and then probably hit it and then probably blow it out. Something like that. Like that's kind of the move that I'm looking for. Um, a generic turnover and then you might see the Fed be like, oh, hold on at this point or something like that. Uh, but uh, the other thing that's probably mm, I think if we were going to do like a big ABC wave it would probably be on the actual downtrend line and not on like this little bear shelf here I think this bear shelf is just going to push us down into the trend line um, this is way too steep I think for an ABC like if we saw like an ABC wave on this vertical red line here it would be like like this like it would be similar to COVID but much worse. I don't think we're doing that right now. But if we if we break if we break and don't bounce, like watch out, like we'll, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> we'll worry about that later. Um, I think we're just getting pushed down into a downtrending support line and we're gonna bounce and kind of find a top. I think we are gonna find a top though and turn over again and look out for something around here later, like next year mid next year. I think we'll be turning over in the middle of next year. Um, and I think that is actually going to be the top. But at which point, you know, you can bounce again and put in kind of a lower top. And then I think we might roll into a bear market next year. Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking is happening here. Uh, and that makes sense. Uh, if you go look at the other indicators, like the, the treasury cycles and everything like that, it looks like we're rolling into a recessionary period. But if you look at, you know what, let me go do, well, let me say one thing, I guess the IWM is a good, a good way to look at margin loans. Like the IWM just about maps margin loans perfectly because like any bank loans that are going into like nonsense and super risky stocks, like is going to push the IWM up. These are all the small cap stocks, the Russell 2000. And so you see the, you see the Russell pushing up and failing here and breaking into a new channel like the Russell's going into this channel now this is this means margin loans are not only slowing down they're reversing and getting called in and so that is actually way worse of a picture than I just painted like if the Russell's crashing like this that's really bad that's really bad that means like all the fake money loaned out into the stock market is like getting margin called back in in a hurry I don't know I don't think that I don't think that's happening actually like just looking at this chart is it's threatening to happen <laughs> that's worse than what I was thinking um, forget I said that for now um, but just the Russell in general gives you a good look at margin loan and I just like to use it as sort of a margin loan indicator because you really don't if you try to look up stats and charts on margin loans, you really can't see all of them because there's margin loans that are done in bank swaps, which don't show up on any of that data. And you can have banks like holding your your positions for you uh, with bank swaps. Like when we saw the Archegos fund blow up, like all of those, all of those, it was a mess, like billions of dollars in margin loans, but they were all in bank swaps. So you won't see any of that stuff on the margin loan data. Um, but you will see that in the IWM. Like this tracks it pretty well. Anyway, uh, yeah, 
I want to go look at the Treasury spread yield and talk about interest rates and where we are in the cycle. I don't look at this chart very often. But when I do the when I look at the treasury yields, I like to look at a spread. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> That's a big move. I didn't know it did this. Um go to the weekly. Here, let me show you like let me show you the interest rate spreads. And so I do the 10 to 20 year spread because it gets rid of the short end of the treasury bond curve. And so it ignores like the Fed manipulation for the most part. And you just you just see the spread in the middle of the yield curve. And so you can tell when we're down here, when we're down here below the zero line, this is an inverted yield curve down here. And that means you're about to head up into a recessionary period. But like you get, actually get into the recession when you go from an inverted yield curve to a to a vertical yield curve. When you're up here, this is a this is a, like a high yield curve where where their bonds are shaped how they're supposed to. Like the low end of the curve is low, and like the long bonds have better interest rates like they should have because it's like 30 years out you should have a better interest rate on the long end of the curve but like when you're up here banks are making money and the yield curve makes sense when you're down here like below zero that means that the 30 year or the 20 year bond well, does so it's 10 to 20 but it means the 20 year bond is worth less than the 10 if you're below zero the bonds are upside down that's an inverted yield curve and that means just the financial system makes no sense. Banks are unprofitable. And then that's when the Fed and the government comes in and intervenes and does some kind of policy. Like uh, they drop interest rates or they do QE or you get like this MMT money. And so here we got all of those things. We got QE. Um, there was almost no room to drop interest rates because we're so close to zero. And we got MMT like stimulus money. Uh, you know, from Congress, and so we popped up, but this is very bizarre, like, this pattern has not happened, like, in the last 70 years, I don't think, like, we go down, we go up, we go down, we go up, but, like, this, this looks like a continuation, maybe, of the down pattern, like, we kind of got, we kind of got, like, a, a false bottom, and then a real bottom here, so, like, if this is a false bottom, where and this is this uh, spike right here, this is COVID, um, and that's near zero interest rates, you know, and we pushed up a little bit, but interest rates are still super weak. But if we push down and go inverted now, which we could do over the next, whatever, two or three years, like, this is going to be an inverted yield curve, and it's going to be at negative interest rates. And that is a deflationary setup that is nobody expects. Um, and it's considering doing it now. Uh, otherwise, if we if we end up reversing and pushing up to higher interest rates and doing a more normal looking cycle, like once you break above this line, once you've gone like flat or inverted and you push up past this line, which is just like the yield curve goes steep at this point. Um, once you get into a steep yield curve area, like this is the financial crisis. This is the dot-com uh, recession blow-off. Like this is the 90s recession. Like that's that's exactly where you go into a recession. So if we, if we do push up and go up here, like we're going into a recession, and if we drop down here negative and flip the yield curve, like this is going into negative interest rates on the world reserve currency those are both uh bad or complicated i guess um anyway this is a cool chart to look at uh just looking at bonds you know bond trading tells you what the interest rates are going to be the interest rates tell you pretty much like what the margin loans are going to be right so if we're coming down right now that means margin loans are gonna chill out as we come down because the the price is getting worse. You wanna wait until you get down to the best possible interest rate and then you wanna take loans out, right? 
So, like, coming down just means people would want to wait until you get down. Like, if you could get, you know, a 1% loan on refinancing your house, but right now it's 4%. Like, you want it to come down to 1, and then you refinance, right? The margin loan is the same thing. Like, a, this is a bad deal on loans if it's coming down. So you wait. But you can get a pullback in the market when that's happening. But if they push up and this pushes us into a recession, like that could also be bad for the market. But that would be like long-term bad for the market, and this would be a temporary pullback before another probably big move up. Anyway, right now it looks like we're coming back down, which is not really what I thought was happening, and this flies in the face of everyone saying everything about inflation and all that. Like it's a, it's a deflation move. Um, it's just continuation of the down move from the financial crisis, really. Um, so, yeah, this is a this is a cool thing to watch. Oh, and then uh, I'll do other. I may definitely talk about Bitcoin because it's a weekend video and Bitcoin's actually trading right now. But Treasury bonds breaking out to the upside, as I've said in the last six, seven videos or something like that. Bitcoin hates when treasuries move to the upside. Let me turn the log back on. Go to the daily. And and Bitcoin freaking crashed. Wow, I'm uh, visiting family in New York, not watching Bitcoin right now. But um, that's, that's bigger and faster of a down move than I was kind of thinking. Yeah, see, like, Bitcoin is doing a little bear shelf move similar to what the S&P is doing. Um, but we're still, we still have a bull trend in Bitcoin for now. We still have a bullish channel that we're moving up. And we still have a long-term, like, kind of bullish bubble line. And so we're kind of running into the top of the ribbon. Which, I mean, you know, you go back and you can see, like, the previous couple tops, we've, like, blown the top out and then come down. Uh, this time we blew the top out weekly, a little weaker, and we hit it again. And so it's getting into dangerous territory. Um, you know, people say that Bitcoin will cycle out until the middle of next year or something. Like, that would just look like something like this. Maybe you poke out of the top again. I don't see it going much higher than 70 something, like 72 maybe, if we got that pattern. And then you would have a big uh, ascending wedge triangle, a reversal pattern, where even like people, the bulls are like, Bitcoin cycle is going to end soon, all of that. Like that's kind of the generic idea of the, of the cycle, but um, we have a lot more stuff going on right now. Like, we have Fed tapering, we have a stock market looking like it's going to pull back. Uh, Treasury breakout to the upside is a huge threat to Bitcoin. Oh, and then the Satoshi Nakamoto court case. I need to do another video completely on that. Um, Craig Wright, the guy who's claimed he's Satoshi Nakamoto for like the last two years and everyone says he's a fraud. Um, he's in court and... He, one of the guys that he worked with, um, supposedly developing Bitcoin is dead, and his brother is suing him for like half of his Bitcoin or something like that. Um, but like, if the court rules that he has to pay the guy, like that means that the court says he's Satoshi and owes the man like some fifty billion dollars or something worth of Bitcoin. I don't know if that would be a dollar payout. Like, how could you even do that? Is he supposed to transfer the Bitcoin? I don't know. I'll have to check up on that. But, like, there's a an open court case right now about potentially Satoshi having to owe someone, like, half his Bitcoin, <laughs> which sounds insane. But uh, if you're looking for a black swan, uh, if a court announces, like, this is Satoshi and he owes someone half his Bitcoin, like, uh, there's your black swan. Um but I don't think Bitcoin needs a, a black swan to pull down. And I and I do, if you watch the last couple of videos, I've already called that Bitcoin's not going to finish this triangle generic pattern. I think it's coming down right now. And this move doesn't look like it's coming down. I'll do this in another video. Like this move doesn't mean it's coming down yet because all we've done is pulled down into support. 
like from the support we could fully finish the normal cycle pattern. Um, I think what we're going to need to do to bust out of here is, well, if we, hmm, like usually once you pick up, once you pick up a downtrend line, like you'll fall off of it and then you'll go pick it up again. Like if we hooked underneath here and then started dropping, like I think that that thing would just drop out. Like I think we'd go to 14, whatever that is. Um, if we hook underneath, it'll start looking pretty bad. As of right now, we haven't blown the bull line yet. And I'm still calling like I'm still calling it to crash from here though. I think that this is going to be the spot that we crash out from. I think we're crashing early and goodness, the implications of like Satoshi being that dude. <clears throat> I'll do that later. I'll worry about that later. Anyway, job report. <laughs> this video is on the job report, which the job report came out bad, which actually is a, it's expected and all, and it's almost good for the market because that, if anything, gives the Fed an incentive to back off of the tapering a little bit. That was kind of the point here, but the market's going to be pulling back probably the general market should be pulling back until the Fed says something like that, which could be <laughs> next week or something. We'll see. But like this week, we can crash all the way out into this area like this week, and then we'll have to see what they say. So, yeah, please smash the like button, hit hit up some comments. If you want to see any in individual stock videos, like all, I can do some shorts. Like I started just kind of doing shorts for whatever random uh, individual stocks people are interested in in doing, but I like to do a bigger kind of macro overlook with these, you know, these news videos and see like what the real whole market is doing. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, good luck on the trading and I'll, I guess I'll do some more crypto stuff this weekend, you know, since it's trading and crypto's crashing and, and there's a massive court case and everything. So uh, yeah, good luck. Cheers.